Well, hello again, teachers. It's Tim Topham here for the third in my series of little Facebook Lives about Facebook um, advertising. I was going to confuse myself there for a second. So look, I thought we'll uh, just wait a couple of minutes for people to uh, to log in. Uh, and in the meantime, um, yeah, I'm really excited because this is actually wrapping up, um, as I mentioned, three parts. And I'll go over what we've covered in case this is your first time joining in uh, with us today. Um, but in the meantime, I thought I'd just give you a quick reminder of a couple of other things that are happening at the moment. And most notably, we're right in the early stages of season four of the podcast. This is the last season of the year. And we're leading up to episode 150, which is going to be the last episode of the year, which is a little bit sad, but it's also really exciting. It's quite a milestone for me, and I'm very excited to have got there. Um, but in the meantime, this week uh, is a great interview with Drew Collins all about helping students and teachers themselves uh, be able to play in bands more confidently. Uh, and he's actually a worship leader, so he's done a lot of work in worship situations. Um, so if you're interested in that, maybe it's a part-time job that you have or maybe it's something that you would like your students to do, then uh, we're talking about that on the podcast this week. And last week, if you missed it, uh, Annie... Uh, Butner Moore was back on to talk about her experience teaching a blind student for the first time and how that actually worked, which was pretty exciting uh, and an amazing story, really. And, and Annie has, uh, you know, she's just gone so far out of her comfort zone to work with this student who not only was blind but also had um, some physical disabilities as well. And the story she told was great. So that was last week on the podcast. Uh, and coming up, of course, we've got, uh, as we wrap up the year, we've got that 150th anniversary podcast episode. And for that episode, I'm actually bringing on seven of my expert teachers from the Inner Circle, uh, names that you'll be very familiar with, uh, the likes of Bradley Sowash and Forrest Kinney and Paul Myatt and Lindell Kennedy, Nicola Canton. Uh, Tom Donald, to all come together and have a bit of a roundtable discussion, a bit of a panel all about the future of piano teaching and music education. So that's going to be something to look forward to. That'll be released at the start of December. And I'm also at that stage releasing a very special gift to all podcast listeners. So more details about that coming up really, really soon. So in today's uh, little mini training, little mini workshop, we're talking about Facebook ads again, and we're talking about images and videos and how you actually should create them, which ones you should use and those sorts of things. So in case you missed them, in the last two weeks, I've done, uh, the first week we had a look at what Facebook ads were, what they looked like and how they work and why they work so well, talking about some of those demographic targeting uh, aspects. We then talked about and discussed planning your Facebook ad campaign, uh, and we gave you the uh, Facebook ad planning guide, which looked a little bit like this, uh, which really stepped you through exactly what you needed to do to um, get your guide, your Facebook uh, ad set up. And then we also, in the last week, just last week, we looked at the lifetime value calculation, and this was a really important uh, calculation to do before you spend any money to work out how much money you can actually spend. Uh, and I know that that's part of the challenge for many teachers when it comes to Facebook ads is actually working out uh, how much money to put down and what, and, and what kind of return uh, you're getting on that investment. So um, that was last week's episode. If you're interested in any of those back episodes of this little Facebook Live series, then head to my Facebook page and click on videos. You'll be able to find those ones. Today we're talking about videos and images, and I think the most important thing to remember is really the goal for any Facebook ad campaign is to get people to stop scrolling and look at your ad. So I was actually just on Facebook before, and uh, as, as, as we all know, uh, Facebook's becoming more and more congested with ads. You really, I mean, I'm just scrolling now, I think I've scrolled, that's five posts, and the six posts is a Masterclass Media Foundation ad. Uh, and what you'll notice, and what I want you to start noticing more and more, is what other people are doing with their ads. Are they using fixed images or are they using videos? And what's the most common one at the moment? 
Uh, and if you're uh, listening to this on the replay or watching it, then you probably know that videos are pretty much the most common one. And I think that's because videos autoplay. So as soon as you scroll past them, there's movement, it catches your eye, and you, you're, you're drawn in. Whereas a static image doesn't necessarily have that same impact. I'm not saying that it's wrong to use um, f static images, but just keep that in mind that videos can make people stop particularly if you're a piano teacher and you're showing videos perhaps of students in your studio uh, playing or performing and a parent scrolling might go, oh, that's what I, I would love for my son or daughter to be there on stage or playing in that band or having fun with a piano teacher at a piano. They're the kind of videos that can really capture attention. So I would definitely have a bit of a think about that. Uh, so that's the, that, that first goal is to get people to stop scrolling and then it's to get them to engage by either watching and then hopefully clicking. Uh, that's the ultimate goal, of course. So we've got these two ad types, images and videos. The images are great, but you've got to keep in mind a couple of things. And uh, as per the last two weeks episodes, I'm going to be giving you my Facebook ad image guide as a free download today. And one of the important things we talk about right at the top here is using text on images. Uh, Facebook doesn't really like people putting a whole lot of text on top of their images and they get penalized, which means your ad just simply won't be shown as much as it, the same ad with no text over the top of the image. So keep this in mind. And we've got a, a link to a great post um, to read more about that here. And also, there's a place that Facebook actually has where you can upload the picture and it will tell you whether it's okay to use. So that's my first little point about images. Now with videos, as I mentioned a moment ago, videos are fantastic. Don't feel you've got to get all the special lighting and a DSLR camera and make the background fuzzy and things like that. That's all great, but it takes time, it takes money, and it takes effort, uh, and most of the time it's probably unnecessary. As long as you can hear okay, and uh, do let me know if you can hear me okay, I'm assuming that uh, my microphone is working. Uh, oh, I can see there's a couple of people live now, so do say hi. Uh, as long as the audio quality is okay, the video quality is okay, you'll be, you'll be absolutely fine. And so I do most of my Facebook ads uh, if they're video using my, uh, my iPhone. And I would recommend you do the same thing, at least to start with. Uh, and I've actually gone from a DSLR camera back to using my iPhone just because it's easier to use. So the next kind of question is, well, what imagery do you use? And, um, and how do you actually design them and make them look really good? Uh, so the the point there I would make is that um, I recommend Canva. I think Canva, C-A-N-V-A dot com, if you're not familiar with it, it's a free tool that pretty much makes any image sound, well, uh, sorry, <laughs> any image look amazing. Uh, and they've got lots of templates. So right in Canva, you can choose a Facebook ad image size and you've got the size perfect. Uh, you can then flash it up, add a little bit of text if it's appropriate and you'd like to do that. Um, they also have thousands and thousands of stock images and they're all $1. Um, and so stock images are okay, but what you'll find, and you might have noticed this a little bit, and I've been guilty of this myself too when I've um, had to rush through an image or something like that and I've gone and picked a stock image and then I've seen it on other people's websites, the, the standard image of the piano teacher and the student at the piano or the, just the boy at the piano or the girl or whatever it is. So uh, I would be wary of using stock images. The best images, are, of course, are of you and your students. Making sure that, of course, you've got permission from the parents to use them, uh, this can be the best way to do it. And as I said before, too, having a video that plays with you doing some teaching or having fun or laughing at the piano can be great. I think Wendy Stevens from Compose Create, if anyone follows her, if you see her ads come up uh, or her posts, they're very engaging because she's always got the most peculiar look on her face. In, she's kind of all like like this at the piano with a, with a child and you just want to click it to see what on earth she's been doing or she's wearing a crazy hat or something like that. So she's very clever in that way and I think we can be clever as well just by making that image engaging uh, and making it really real too. Thank you very much, Fraser. I can see Fraser and Sophie here uh, saying hi from Canberra, Sophie. Nice to see you. And also liking Canva, which is very good too. 
So if you do want to use some stock images, and I'm not saying don't, but use them in moderation and choose ones that suit the kind of style. We've actually got a list of recommended uh, sites that I tend to use for my blog articles. So my blog posts, if you look at my blog, timtopham.com, you'll see that my images, those, uh, the, the look and style of those images is done with a template on Canva that we've created, so it's not one of the stock templates. And then the imagery that's put with it def, den, generally, generally comes from one of these sites. So the ones that I recommend are Pixabay, Unsplash, and Deposit Photos. The big ones like Shutterstock are fantastic, but they start getting very expensive very quickly. Uh, Pixabay is actually completely free, uh, and Unsplash, they're slightly more artistic photos, so they're good. Uh, and Deposit, Deposit Photos is, is another great site that I, I've, um, I've act, I actually got a discount sort of 100 downloads or something from it, which I'm still going through. So they're all great. And as I said before, Canva itself, where I recommend doing photo and video editing now, unless you're a Photoshop expert, they also have hundreds of thousands of stock images. And if you, you can try as many of them as you want in your, in your designs, and then the one you actually go with and download, you pay a dollar for. So it's a, it's a bargain, really. Considering that someone like Shutterstock, they used to charge so much money for each photo. It was insane. They've been completely brought down by the competition, all charging very small amounts. They've gone, well, actually, we've got to start charging less, but they still are expensive. So there's a few thoughts about imagery on your ads. And we've gone through a lot of background about ad planning and working out again how much to spend and things like that on your ads in the last three weeks. So if you've, if you've missed any of the last two Facebook Lives that I've done over the last two Tuesdays here, Melbourne time, then please head back to my Facebook page and jump into the video section. You can check those out. But what I am very excited to let you know about now is that you can grab this download. So if you'd like to grab this, then uh, let's see, we've got, uh, yeah, just type in the word images. Where is it? It's over here. That word there. Just type images into the chat box and my special magic bot will uh, send that to you. Uh, and uh, as I say, the last two videos have also had freebies. So the lifetime value calculation sheet uh, and also the ads planning guide. You can grab all of them from watching those videos and putting the right code word in. Now, I am very excited to also announce with this very special blue box up here that we're running a webinar. It's happening this week uh, and I've been kind of talking about it a little bit. The problem with these Facebook Lives, of course, is that they're short and I want to keep them short. But we've really just gone through the background of things. So just getting you set up and thinking about how you could find more students with Facebook advertising. What we haven't been able to do is go into deep detail about how to actually create an ad on Facebook and hit publish and see it show up in people's feeds. So what I've done is I've teamed up with Andrea Val, who's a international specialist on Facebook advertising, and we've put together a webinar for you. It's coming up this weekend. So it's 8 a.m. on Saturday, my time here in Melbourne. That's 5 a.m. in Perth, Hong Kong, Singapore. Uh, 10 p.m. London on the 19th, Friday, 5 p.m. Eastern, 2 p.m. Pacific time on Friday. So hopefully it's just before teaching um, on uh, Pacific time, maybe mountain time, you're kind of right during your teaching, uh, and then Eastern time, hopefully you can grab it. And Londoners, I've tried to make it, I know it's late, but hopefully not too late for you to join us. So if you are interested in finding more students, building up your marketing and, and understanding how Facebook can be used to draw more students into your studio without you having to constantly go out and search for people and put flies in boxes and put up signs at the supermarket or things like that, then come along to this webinar. There will be a replay. So if you can't join us live, as always, I will send you a replay. Uh, and of course, Inner Circle members will get that replay with all the other ones. And we'll be talking about things like... Um, Deciding on your goal and, and a, pi a piano teacher's strategy, uh, the components of an ad, what the ads manager interface actually looks like and how to use it. And it can be a little bit confusing at first, but uh, we've got some tips there for you. Uh, ad sets, what an ad set is and how to use them. And also how to, com 
to add two images and be able to split test, we call it. So run two ads at the same time and then work out which one's the best and then turn off the one that's not working so well so you're not wasting money. So that's a great trick as well. We'll talk also about um, how to know if your ads are working using the Facebook Pixel, which I mentioned back two weeks ago, uh, and also about understanding your reports too. So we're going to cover a fair bit of ground. Uh, Andrea, as I've mentioned, if you want to look her up, Andrea Val, V-A-H-L, she is an author of Facebook Ads for Dummies, uh, speaker at Social Media Marketing World and global speaker. She is amazing and she charges a lot of money for her time. You guys are all getting it for free. So the sign up is on this side of me. Here it is here, timtopham.com slash webinar. If you haven't reserved your seat, please do so uh, today while you think about it. Uh, and of course, if you want that Facebook Ads Guide, you can just type in images there. Uh, Dawn, all of these Facebook ads, uh, Facebook live videos are available on replay. Just head to my Facebook page at any time and go to videos and you'll see all of the ones that I've done in the past there uh, for your viewing pleasure. All right, now I've got one final exciting announcement before I wrap up today. And that is that the webinar this weekend is going to be the launch of a course that Andrea has created for piano teachers all about Facebook advertising and it's called step-by-step -step Facebook advertising success. I'm excited because this is the only course that I know about for Facebook advertising just for piano teachers and directed solely at you guys. So she's created it on behalf of us and as always Inner Circle members have access to it. In fact, we launched it yesterday to our members. But the thing that I wanted to mention to you is that if you're not an Inner Circle member and you're not ready to become a member yet, we're actually releasing this course as a one-off payment if you would like to buy it separately from the membership. If you want to find out how that's all going to happen, then you need to be on the webinar and I'll tell you more about how that works, how to get it, how much it will cost and all those kinds of things. But look, this is going to be an amazing investment for any teacher who is keen to get that traffic coming in each week, new student inquiries, and to be able to feel a little bit more comfortable about their marketing just working and also maybe building a waiting list or even building enough student numbers to perhaps hire another teacher. And there's a lot of teachers who have been inspired by the podcast we did um, a few episodes ago where one of my guests, an Inner Circle member, was talking about how she hired her first piano teacher. Uh, and I know now of at least four other teachers who've gone and done this and had success with it already. So it's great to see this kind of impact happening. Uh, but all of these things are investments in your business, and I want you to really think about it that way. And Facebook ads, learning about how it works, is crucial even if you would like to eventually outsource this to someone else in the future. Uh, it's great to know how it works and be able to talk the language. That's what we're going to help you be able to do. All right, I've spoken enough today. Uh, let me know if any questions. Uh, I'll just have a quick look at the question there. Um, Sophie says, excellent. Thank you for the opportunity. Brilliant. Dawn, you've got the replay there. Uh, so yeah, make sure you sign up, grab your image worksheet, and uh, I will see you on Saturday morning, my time, Friday evening for the rest of the world. Uh, I can't wait, actually. This is going to be a super duper. We've already got about 400 registered, I think. So it's going to be a, a big occasion, and I can't wait to see you there. Thanks, everyone, uh, and uh, look forward to seeing you then. Bye-bye.